Uh, look good? Okay. Hello everybody! Today I'm going to teach you how to make a retro gaming console out of a Raspberry Pi. Let's do it. Alright, so before you go, like, what? How do I do this? I don't understand. Um, it's actually very simple. There's a lot of steps, but um, it's actually very simple. So let's talk about what this is real quick. This is called a Raspberry Pi microcomputer. So like, there's a little quad-core processor right there, and there's some RAM, and there's a little bit of a GPU back here. So this is a full-fledged, real working computer. And one that's really cool, I mean, it's got HDMI right there, it's got a headphone slash video out, so analog video, and gigabit internet and four USB ports. And there's actually another USB port right there, that's its power. So it actually runs off a of five volt power, so you can plug in like a phone charger or those USB battery packs and it will run off of it. So its storage is actually a micro SD card, which is this thing right here. So there's a little slot right there that hooks it in rather nicely. Ta-da! We're gonna load an OS, which is an operating system, on this SD card. So we can run um, a very interesting, cool project called RetroPie, which allows me to play retro consoles, retro emulators on this, because that's cool. How does one actually, you know, get, oh, my dog's in the background. Molly! Hey, girl. Come here. Come here. Um, Molly, uh, 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 come here. Uh, nope, I'll just uh, sit right here. I'll just sit right here. Molly! I'll just sit right here. So uh, we're first gonna clean this SD card out so there's nothing on it and um, load an image. Okay, so now I'm gonna put my SD card on this little reader. Yeah, it sees it and hears it. All right, it sees the other drive and it has some stuff on it, which is another OS that was on this, but we're going to take this OS and make it go away. There is some software you need in order to get this to work properly, because you have to do something called um, mounting an image which is not as like difficult or as technical as it sounds um you do need a piece of software called image writer a win 64 disk imager so we're going to pull up a web browser real quick and go oh no wait what is that that uh, you don't want to see that what bad form josh bad form this is it so if you find something that looks very similar to this you got it so go ahead and go to their downloads page and this link will be in the description okay it will be in the description i swear it will be so uh, you could donate to them, so if you feel like donating to this really cool thing, uh, go for it. But if not, um, this is what you do. Okay, so I actually have a Raspberry Pi 2. So this is the second iteration of the Raspberry Pi, but now they have a 3, which I hear runs better because it's got some more fancy schmancy stuff on it. Because they're both essentially the same. Now, um, it will take a couple minutes to download. Um, it's only about, about a gig, so don't worry about it. And um, you also have to extract it, so if you don't have an extractor, I recommend Winwar. It's one of the nicest, nicer extractors you can do, There's, you can do some extra stuff with it. So when that is finished downloading, we'll go back to the thing. Okay, it is now finished downloading, so we're going to open it up and see what it is. Ah, go away, go away, okay. So this is it, this is the correct one. Um, it's not that large, it's about a gig, so we're going to actually uh, take this and uh, we're gonna drag it onto the desktop for now, just for sake of, let me show you how to do this. So this will extract, which will take a couple seconds, even as big a computer as this is. So I'm probably gonna finish this explanation. It's gonna be done. But so um, what we're gonna do to this image is mount it onto the SD card. So when this computer reads it, it will understand, look, it's already done. Uh, so when this computer reads it, and under it understands that that's not random data, but that's its operating system, so it'll try to run from the SD card. So, let's do that. Okay. Now we have to first locate it, which is on our desktop, so it's easy to find, and um, mount it onto the disk image. So first make sure it's going to the SD card. My SD card is F. Yours may vary. Just make sure it's the correct device, because if you try to do other things, it will crap out your drive. So we're going to find it. So a desktop, RetroPie, open. See, now it's got it right there. We're going to click right. 
cool. All right, so now it's gonna write there. Now this will take a while. Write has been successful, so it's done. So uh, now we're going to go to the Raspberry Pi itself on the floor, and uh, we'll continue. Like any computer, in order to set up, you first need the computer itself, fully assembled and ready to go, a mouse and keyboard, which I'll just plug into one of the four USB ports, a monitor, I'm going to use the HDMI monitor, but you can use any other one that works that way, either adapters or a nice camera adapter for the SD video stuff, and power, which is really cool because I'm going to show you how to make it run off of a little phone charger. This is like a... Uh, five or six dollar phone phone charger from Walgreens. Walgreens is awesome, and we're going to simply plug it in. Plugged it in, lights up, it's booting. <laughs> five volt computing, guys. Pretty ba. It first boots the image, and then it's going to boot Emulation Station, which is what we're going to use in order to run the emulators to play the games. When you see this screen, just assume you've done everything correctly because. You have. The older version of this software that I'm using did this on its own, but now you have to like force it to do it now. So uh, instead of it creating a folder for you and then adding the list of things for you to drag and drop your ROMs and ISOs to, um, you have to create that folder now. So um, how you do that is that you make sure that your make sure that your USB is uh, FAT32 and um, make a new folder. So new folder and call it retro pie all lowercase retro pie boom and you're done that's it so how it works now instead of it doing it during the boot process um, I actually have the Raspberry Pi running in the background behind me um, it's booted up it's an emulation station it's all ready so now what I'm gonna do is simply take this out and I'll meet you on the floor Okay, now I'm gonna plug it in. Put the game loaded on there. I may have to reboot in order to get it get it to actually pop up so it does its thing. So I'm actually gonna do that real quick. Hopefully, you'll see a NES emulator somewhere in here. You do! So let's hit A. A. Press the A button to your finger figure. Okay, hold on. There you go. Okay, to show that I'm not like faking it here, here's my keyboard. I made the A button A. This is my D pad. So, oh snap. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I survived. So, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you want to comment something like, uh, want me to play a particular game on there, or if any questions about how to get it to run, or if you're having issues, let me know. And if you want to support me as a whole, why don't you hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video. And as always, have a fantastic day.